Hello, this is Lawrence Lewis. And this is Sister Christian. Today is Friday, April 3rd, 2020. And this is the Producers Happy Hour. Two producers on opposite coasts reaching out to our filmmaking and live event community to hear your stories about how this pandemic has affected you, your life, and your work. Your stories let us know that we're not alone. It's important for us to keep sharing our experience and ideas. We love hearing your stories. Email us, or better yet, record a one- to two-minute voice memo and send it to producershappyhour at gmail.com. Or just follow the instructions on our website, producershappyhour.com. And please share the show with friends and colleagues. We want these stories to be heard. We think it's very important because I know it's definitely helping us to hear them. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Lawrence, today we're speaking with Emily Plunkett Fleischer. Emily has been on Producers Happy Hour before on one of our Vault episodes about mm-hmm. communication. She currently works at Verizon as their manager of broadcast production on their marketing and advertising sourcing team. That's a hell of a title, Emily. That really is. <laughs> And before taking that staff job, Emily was a very well-known New York-based line producer. So I'm really excited to chat with her again. For our listeners who just joined us, I don't know if we've explained it, but we had, what, six episodes kind of in the can of this whole different version of this show before the pandemic took hold. And we shelved those. They're in the archives. <laughs> We're going to release them at some point. But uh, so Emily was on that sh- one of those episodes, and I'm glad to have her back to talk about What is now happening in our our crazy lives? It'll be a great perspective. Um, We'll try to get our first episodes out there just for fun. We're we're working on it, guys. Yeah. Yep. So, Christian, how are you? I'm tired. I am too. I'm like exhausted. Yeah. And it's not physical exhaustion Mm -mm. as more. I mean, well, actually, let me take that back. I think, you know, I physically feel tired, but my brain is also like a mush pot right now. It's like oatmeal. Yeah. And then um, my emotions are just like, you know, I feel like I could cry at any moment. But I'm also like too tired to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean. You're that, feeling all the feelings right now. I've got all the feels. I guess I'm also somewhat lighthearted about it as well. Yeah. Because I realize that I I just have to feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I got it. I know I'm doing it. So just let it ha- just examine it and let it happen is what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Circling back to this, but it's like we can't control it. No, it's out of our control. Yes. And the the great lesson we learn as producers is you can only control the things you can control, and you can't freak out about the other things. You just have to react and respond accordingly. And properly yeah haven't we talked about before like when we were pms having a producer say something like uh why aren't you panicked or more concerned and it was like yeah. well yeah 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 <laughs> why <laughs> it would just make everything worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i think i lost uh many jobs because i didn't panic as much as everyone else wanted me to panic yes so. because of your calm cool demeanor <laughs> right. yeah I mean, I can put on a big show of panic if it's necessary, but I normally, I feel like it's not. (laughs) Yeah, no, most of the time it's not. (laughs) How are you feeling today? I don't know. I guess I'm a little down. Yeah. Um, I had fun last night with friends on Zoom. We played a blackjack. Shut up. I rigged, yeah, I rigged an overhead camera onto (laughs) my little blackjack table and I dealt and everyone played and (laughs) we drank. It was a lot of fun. (laughs) I love that you have a blackjack table. Well, I don't. Yeah, like I, have a, a, I have a Los Feliz a, casino out of your <laughs> canals. <laughs> Speakeasy. Oops. No, I had, just have a felt that I just rolled out onto my dining oh, got table. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, that kept me entertained most of the night and uh, maybe drank a little too much wine. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Today is down Friday for me. But uh, is there ever think, too much you know, wine drinking? <laughs> Only for the morning guy. Yeah. Got, not oh, the, yes. Not for, the, not for the night guy. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, a lot of things got me down. Yesterday's press conference with the White House was just <laughs> a, a train wreck. I like that. That You know what? I, I think that um, what we what some news organizations are adopting is looking at those and um, monitoring them and then cutting them off when they become just the marathon of 
back padding because there's nothing worse than seeing a situation that we're in and then somebody congratulating themselves about it. Uh, God, there's nothing to congratulate yourself about right now, it right? It's disgusting. Yeah. And, so, and now they've got Kushner involved. Oh. <laughs> and he's fantastic. Oh, God. So he's in charge of something. And then there's <laughs> another guy who is talking about 26 boats or 26 planes. They got 26 planes full of stuff. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'll get off my soapbox. It was, it was frustrating. And then 6.6 6 million unemployment claims this week. It's new claims. It. Yeah. And new. again, people are. In a week. New. Yeah. yeah. And so that's a total of from 3.3 before. We've got right at 10 million people. 10, 10 million people. And those are all new claims. And we're still hearing about people not able to get through and claim in multiple states. So we still don't have a handle on how many people are actually out of work yet. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be big numbers for the next few weeks. Yeah, and so that contributes to the exhaustion that I think we both feel. Yeah, that is for sure, but day by day. Yes, which leads us to water challenge. <laughs> I'm drinking my water. I'm water drinking challenge is the one that I'm completely acing. 100% on. The subscription <laughs> challenge, I'm still failing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I can blame a virtual blackjack last night for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> blackjack. FYI, we didn't bet any money. We're not recklessly gambling our money away right now, but it was all just for fun. Oh, oh. I mean, I don't know how it would be fun unless you'd be gambling. And I would say that <laughs> I don't I don't know that I would be saying that it would be reckless. Maybe it'd be, you know, earning your mortgage. <laughs> There's many ways to look at that. <laughs> many ways to look at it. <laughs> and, but a subscription challenge, on the other hand, I know has been a challenge for me and you. Yeah. And I am actually feeling like doing it. I am too. I'm starting to f get that feeling of like, okay, so you've procrastinated it and stuff. But now let's just take a look and see where we're at. Because all of this honesty that I've been, you know, really looking for when I, you know, see Sugar Daddy Cuomo, I feeling like I'm ready to turn that on myself. Oh. Because I, I'm feeling yeah. very much like subscription challenge is definitely something where uh, it's going to open your eyes to or oh, my eyes just let's yeah. make this about me my eyes to what the waste that i could trim yeah yeah, yeah. so that's Absolutely. a bit of honesty that i've probably been in denial about for a little while <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so christian for my news update today do you hear that the 2020 can lions festival of creativity is officially canceled they had postponed it to october right but looking out that far they made the announcement this morning that it's officially canceled. The organizers were hoping to have it then. They were thinking it would be less of a threat, but but no. They said, our difficult decision follows in-depth consultation with our partners and customers and reflects the unprecedented societal, health, and economic challenges currently facing the world, as well as our desire to remove any uncertainty about the running of the awards and events for our partners and customers. I think it's pretty responsible. I mean, it is. I'm waiting for a function that I have tickets to over the summer to cancel. I'm surprised. Uh, I, yeah, I'm surprised that it's not canceled yet. But as things are right now, I can't imagine being in a, you know, a grocery store for longer than 10 minutes with as many people uh, that are right. in there. And I just saw photos of the of subway last night at rush hour. There's some people out there that don't have the privilege or luxury of being able to stay home like we do. Yeah, yeah. And they're out there working and the subways are packed and it scares the shit out of me. It's scary. For them. I mean, yeah. I just, yeah. So just thinking about going to a, an event that you would need to have a ticket for just doesn't feel right right now. So I'm sure they'll cancel yeah. soon, but yeah. yeah. So good. They're very responsible of can very responsible. Sorry to hear it, though. I know it's I know a lot of people in our industry look forward to that. So, yeah. OK, well, I uh, thought that since it's Friday, I would like to tell some folks, uh, give some ideas. If you guys feel like you uh, would like to volunteer 
Um, there's a few things that I started looking up, and um, I have a friend out there. Her name is Carolina, and she does a lot of different... She's an actor, but she also does a lot of different things like, you know, help with cat rescue. And right now she's out there volunteering, passing meals out to seniors. I was inspired by her today, and I looked up a few things like Invisible's Hands Deliver, their they're in desperate need of volunteers in the New York City area right now. Oh, and wow. I'll definitely post that link. And there's a few others, too, like New York Cares, who, you know, you can go on and you can actually look at what um, the volunteer job is and how many people that they need. And if it's in your area, you can go in and register for it and, you know, help out how you can if you want to. That's amazing. Yeah. So I will definitely post those on our page. You know, I know it's just for New York City, but I will look up some for L.A. and other area or nationwide, maybe Mm. to just to give other people some options. That's great. Today, we have a voice memo from Eli Shell, who is a writer, director and a video producer from the Bay Area. Uh, Let's take a listen. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Eli Shell. I am a creative producer in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I am both part-time at a corporate gig and freelance the rest of my time. I'm also teaching a class online at the moment. I am still working generally at my part-time gig. I'm getting into streaming, uh, figuring out how to create corporate events from a streaming perspective rather than going live, just using people's computers, using Zoom, that sort of thing. As my freelance gig, I actually have a government client, which is kind of my biggest piece of advice for everyone. Having a client that is working not just the same amount, but even more during this time is there's actually a lot of opportunity here. The work I've gotten from the county has been uh, consistent. And while not the most creatively fulfilling, it's keeping me employed at the moment. So that's, you know, that's my probably my biggest piece of advice for anyone listening. I have had jobs cancel, but I've gotten more jobs because of my affiliations with this uh, county government office. And so, yeah, for the moment, I'm staying productive. I'm staying positive. I don't know what next month is going to bring. I don't have a lot of stuff on the calendar and nobody knows if we're going to be out shooting soon. So uh, it's difficult. It's scary. But uh, the only thing to do is kind of take it one day at a time. I'm really focusing on communicating with my clients as much as possible, but also reconnecting with folks from around the world that I've kind of lost contact with. This is kind of the perfect time to do that. So that's those are my small bits of advice. I hope it's helpful. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, smart. Uh, Eli, thank you so much. I mean, yeah. that that's huge advice. Yeah. And I think it immediately talked about adaptability, right? As soon as something like this happens and everything gets shut down, it's like, okay, well, who who is working? What industries are right. in need of something, either, you know, some method of communicating message, getting the word out and focusing your efforts towards that? You know, so people that are like owner operators that have a camera right. and can shoot something and edit something on their own. There's opportunity out there to be using your services for these essential businesses that are still operating and do need to communicate something to the people. So that's smart and good advice. Thank you so much. And everyone, we love hearing your voice memos and your advice. Um, please send us send us a little little tidbits, little tidbit. We'd love to hear little from nuggets, you. Little nuggets of your life, because and again, I've had somebody say, oh, I have no story. I'm just working from home. That's but a story. That, That's a story because you're working. What are you doing? What kind of work are you making? And just hearing that can can give somebody hope or an idea or just feel a little more connected. Yeah, a little spark. Cinnamon, a little spark. A little spark of an idea of like, how? what can I do? All right, before we get on to the interview, Christian, our website, we keep adding stuff to the Take Action page on our website. The website's producershappyhour.com. Click on Take Action. Christian, we still have your petition about no rent in New York City, right? Yes. And then um, we also uh, don't forget about Isaac's uh, live events petition that we posted yesterday. Yes. It's very live important. Live events coalition. Mm-hmm. It's this whole website, but you can get to the petition on their website. Yeah, we've added a few other things like uh, the masks 
mental health resources, yeah, uh, volunteer options. Yeah. It, hey, email us something that you think would be good for our community as well, and we're happy to talk about it and add it to the take action page. Yes. All right. Let's listen to this interview because this is this is pretty cool. It gives us a little insight onto the client side of things during all this. Emily Plunkett Fleischer joined Verizon in 2017 as manager of broadcast production on their marketing and advertising sourcing team. Prior to joining Verizon, she was an accomplished and energetic producer of commercials and web-based content for over 20 years. As a woman previously working in the production community and now on the client side using her years of experience, she is inspired to teach and mentor people as she believes that continued growth and learning is a must. Let's take a listen. So, Emily, we'd like to first check in on how you are and how your family is doing. Well, we're good. We are. We escaped New York and came out to East Hampton and we're holed up here. We're on three weeks of that, which is great because um, an, apartment, an apartment is not a good place. And Sophia has asthma. So I was like, we're out. Once we got yeah. the word her school was closed. We left that Friday afternoon and uh, it's like, bye. <laughs> so Emily, I know we read a little bio about you before you came on, but if, if you could just give us a little bit, bit of a background about your career, your path and, and what you're doing right now before all this uh, happened. Um, I've been at Verizon now as a, in the broadcast production area for the last, it'll be three years this June. And basically what I do at this stage of my career is I support marketing and I support sourcing. So I sit in sourcing, as they say, because that's all about savings. My main thing is to work as a collaborator with um, marketing. We do a lot of business, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of broadcast production. And I work as sort of the liaison between marketing and our agencies. Right. And you have to go through me and my teammate as a... Um, to endorse anything. And we, we, we help them. We take them from soup to nuts and walk through the process of every production, be it animation, be it mm -hmm. uh, live broadcast production, be it mm -hmm. a social video, whatever it is, that's what we do. And uh, it's busy right now. It's been kind of crazy. And before that I was a freelance commercial producer and content producer for a very long time and, mm -hmm. and a vendor and all sorts of things. I've morphed a number of times, but this is where I've ended up. I think this is kind of like an end game for a little while for me and I'm thrilled yeah. that I have it because it's a full-time job. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are not working right now, and especially mm -hmm. in this strange climate. Uh, I'm very lucky, you know, and by Friday, I'm burnt out. Maybe I'm a little cranky. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, can you tell us Basically, take us back three or four weeks when this started to happen, because for Lawrence and I in the freelance world, right, what we started to hear rumblings of was like cancellations left and right, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. a couple of big campaigns. Um, so I guess we're looking, if we look back even like five weeks ago, we had some right. pretty big shoots going on. Mm -hmm. And me being my nickname of safety gal, I was like, whoa, whoa, red, red <laughs> yeah. flag here. I'm like, we're shooting with real people in California and uh, this is probably not a good thing and people aren't going to travel and they might, it's it just like every red flag went up and we decided to continue on with it. About what time was this? Oh, I would say this was uh, five weeks ago was the first shoot. So and was then, it the first week of March? Or the last mm -hmm. week of February. No, the first okay. week of March. Right. And then mm -hmm. we had another one the second week of <gasps> March. You did? And, and there was pull the plug, don't pull the plug, pull the plug, don't pull the plug. Yep. Um, we put a ton of precautions in place. Mm -hmm. uh, we limited the the amount. We took more stages so we could hold people in different areas. Uh, mm -hmm. We limited Smart. the crew. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everyone was paid. There was, there was never a question of that. But it was... You know, if we don't need the fourth grip, don't bring them in. You know, yeah. if we don't, things like that, masks, Purell, everything were, was there and it went off and everybody got home safely. And and then that was it for, and that was it. And now, yeah. now, as you probably, if you've been watching TV, there's a ton of, we've been repurposing a lot of our footage um, yes. and mm -hmm. changing end cards and looking into uh, UGC like every advertiser and client is doing right now. 
And so it's, it's busy. It's reinventing the wheel and still getting our message. And we're a telecommunications company. I have to let people know that you can use your, you've got your wireless service. You've got your, your uh-huh. internet through Fios or whatever it is. Right. But it's getting your message there. out there. Yeah. It's getting your exactly. message out there and re, maybe repurposing stuff, but also re-recording the voiceovers. So it's more yeah. on brand. Exactly. We set up our voiceover people with home studios. I'd been working with the agencies. All of our post-production companies had contingency plans. We're prepared to work from home. We made sure that the drives were with the editors so that they can do the work. Smart. And, you know, so it's it's been about, I guess, uh, probably five weeks of planning, mm-hmm. knowing that this was coming down the pike. Did we think it was going to be like this? Do you think you're going to be like doing this until July? Nobody I thought that. No. I, Nobody I thought it, but no. I mean... Well, people were more, they were optimistic that yeah. it was going to be over in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. sister kept saying to me, oh, two weeks, it's not a big deal. Who cares? I'm like, two weeks? What are you, nuts? Yeah. This is not <laughs> a two-week situation. We have no this control. This is not over. a two-week situation. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, for me personally, it's been really busy. And I've worked from home. Before, Mm -hmm. uh, as we all have, but now Mm -hmm. within my job, I work from home two days a week. That's how it works for me. But now it's, uh, I am working from home and you literally get up and you start and I have to put boundaries on my day because it just, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm still a mom and you know, I still have to check in with my kid and make sure she's happy. Yeah. And I can't just be like, I'm, 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 you know, you can't do it. You can't do it. Well, there's a certain discipline that, you know, you need to work from home. I know because uh, it's hard to develop that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and I have to, I have a setup. I do every day. I put it away every day at the end of the day and then I pull it out. Wow. I have to have my notebook. I have to have my computer. I have to have my two phones. I have to have my AirPods, everything's charged. I have my personal computer next to me so that I can, you know, I have a break and I need to do something. I pop over to that stool. Yeah. <laughs> right. And and then I find that um, for me, exercise is key. So yeah. um, we've been getting up, my daughter and I've been getting up early in the morning and working out to, you know, YouTube videos or Peloton <laughs> free for 90 days. I don't know if you know that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, and I don't have a bike, but it doesn't matter. They have strength and cardio and mm-hmm. and taking lots of walks but it's been raining so much lately here yeah it's um it's definitely april in new york yeah but it's it's <laughs> going to be really interesting to see what happens to our business you know danny yeah. who's my partner he is uh he's with the ia and you know he's got a, a good ton of members i don't even know how many and i want to say a gazillion and you know you hear about it you know a lot of right. the big shows they went on a hiatus, right? And they go and they paid everybody for two weeks. Most of them did. A couple of not such nice people didn't, independent mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like it's that uh, moment when you're freelance and, you know, you've been you've been doing well, but, you know, maybe you've treated yourself to too many things. Like, oh, well, I'm going to get that. I have a big fat check in my <laughs> and then I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. What do you mean, Emily? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Never done that. I'm going. On, I'm going on a trip. Oh, and those now, boots. And mm. now all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, I need to have six months of paying my rent or my mortgage or my car payment, or yeah. whatever, in the bank. And yeah. like, uh, so, it, to me, that was a little bit of a wake up call. I was like, oh, I've been living a little crazy lately. And I thought, and I'm not freelance. So thank God. But I don't, I don't know. I've been talking to a lot of my friends who are DPs who are on big shows and stuff. And you know, there's nothing going on. There's nothing. Yeah. Nothing going on. And it's not going to, it's not going to for a while. And it's a little little terrifying for, for us freelancers who, you know, kind of live and die by our calendar Mm -hmm. and to see it, see it totally empty is yeah. Yeah. It's startling. And and when you start getting your head around, Mm -hmm. you know, how the pipeline works and how far in advance things have to be thought about and planned and get bought off by clients and get sold through to ad agent. You know, it's just, it's going to be a minute. It is going to be a minute for sure. And I think like, I also, um, I have a a side business that I, you know, I need and um, I own uh, camera gear and I'm not going to see that money for a check from there for a good nine months, which is, I'm like, (laughs) 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. There, Cause it's, you know, it's going to take time. So, you know, it was a little bit of a wake up call even to me. And I think uh, one thing I think as all production people should start taking away from this is being a little bit more proactive in their own savings and not yeah. being so immediate. We're such an immediate culture. Like I need it. I want it. I have to have it. Do you really? So, Emily, I know you said that you're, you're fortunate to be working and, and thankful for having the full time job. Um, Christian and I were just talking before we came on. Like, I don't know if emotionally I could if a job came around right, right. now. Obviously, um, yeah. you, we we would take it, but uh, you know, it's like how do you how do you kind of function in in your professional life when kind of all this you know is going on in the background? Yeah, I don't know, it be, it's really call it tragedy, hard. but it's it is sad. tragic. It's tragic. It is. It it is. It's, it's it's stranger than anything. I've lived through a lot of different things in my life, right. and, and Christian knows this. Is that you know I, I lost my husband five years ago. I had to recreate my life. He'd had a lot of health issues and. And, you know, I've lived through siblings passing, my mother passing, whatever, but mm-hmm. I've always been that person who you get up and you put your boots on and you get out the right. door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, right. But at the same time, you know, would I like to crawl into bed and just pull the covers over my head? No question. And by Friday, and I was thinking, I shouldn't be doing this today. I'm too negative and I'm not a negative person. <laughs> but, but, I just feel like, all right, I have to get up. I got to do it. And then when, when that moment hits, which it just probably hit about 20 minutes ago. Of course. And, yeah. and I put my raincoat on and I walked around my yard for a little bit. I said, like, I got a little crazy. And I thought, I, um, I thought, I don't like this. I don't like who I am right now. I'm not thinking clearly because that, that mm-hmm. panic mode or that like, you, it's very hard, I think, to separate your emotions and your responsibility and, you just have to, you know, everyone always says, be kind yes. to yourself, but you have to be kind to yourself. So when you're feeling like you're listening to some conference call and you're like, this is total bullshit, you know, and why am I listening to this? And this is wasting my time. And this is not business as usual. And blah, blah, blah. And when you feel that, you need to pull yourself back and you got to go, okay. Yeah. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and, and they, it was an agency and they were totally, they just, we're doing a job and they shouldn't have just gone ahead and done it without an email, a text or something. Oh, we were told to, we get it. We get it. There's panic. Everyone's got to do it. But I gave them this example. I said, you know, in the night before my daughter was freaked out, she's 14 years old. And she was saying that she was really scared and her math teacher's uncle had passed. And so she had emailed everybody saying, can't, I'm not doing a zoom call for a couple of days. And it hit Sophia really hard and she was crying and she said, I'm really scared. And I said, it's okay to be scared. And it's better for you to tell me that you're scared than not to. And I said, but what's not okay is to panic. And I said, you can't mm-hmm. panic. You can be scared. And you can voice being mm-hmm. scared to me. And so I was on this call and they're like, Oh, you know, we, we meant to do this, but we didn't. And we just had to get it done. I said, I go, and I gave the same example. I said, mm, mm, mm. I go, I told my 14 year old last night, I'm telling you guys the same thing. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to work quickly. It's okay to do all that stuff, but it's not okay to panic. And what you're doing is panicking and not taking a right. moment, taking a breath and emailing me and saying, this is what's going on. And I would have said, I get it. No question. You got to get it done. You're getting, you know, marching orders from super high up, get this done So get it done. But just, mm-hmm. you know, let's take a moment and take a breath. And that's the same thing with production. You need to take a breath. You can right. be scared, yeah. but you can't panic. You make bad decisions when you panic. Right. And I think that um, I think that a lot of what we, in the beginning, say, take us back to, say, three weeks ago, what we were feeling mm-hmm. was what we were feeling after 9-11. Yes. Yeah. The anxiety, and we didn't know where things were going. And, you know, but we recovered, I think, pretty quickly in new york i think a Mm -hmm. lot of the jobs came back within a two-month period Mm -hmm. so that it was a different time this feels so much more encompassing i mean what do you think oh i totally agree you know with 9 11 you were able to go out you were able to socialize Mm -hmm. you were go and have a drink with somebody connect commiserate and talk about your fears and everything else here, it's a lot of Zoom calls with friends and, and 
you know, connecting with family and virtual dinners and Mm -hmm. virtual drinks, you know, but it's, that's not normal. I mean, I don't believe in normal, but I I don't see it coming back. And it's, when it comes back, it's going to come back differently. We're going to be adapting to a lot of new um, procedures and rules and social things. I don't know what that difference. Yeah. I don't know what that difference is. I, I, yeah. I don't think anybody does yet. And we have to just kind of be patient and wait and be attentive yeah and and uh receptive mm-hmm. to what that is yeah. yeah i mean we're we're used to reacting uh immediately to a change in a job as it is yeah. you know say something happens to your location well i'll just find another one like it's yeah. pretty we're pretty adaptable there's always in that a solution way. we always right. have, we always know yeah. that there's a solution there's always a problem but with every problem there's a solution there's always a solution and and this one we're we're kind of in the dark, right? Yeah. So that's why, as producers, we feel a bit lost because we don't know what the solution is yet. Yeah, because right. we're control freaks. Yes, <laughs> right. Well, the only I think and the we only can't comfort have no control. Over <laughs> we got no control over. Well, this. Yeah, I do yeah. think the uh, one mean, of the few hit the fan everywhere, and you're like going, <laughs> I don't have time to even clean this up. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think some of the 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 small comfort that we can take away, um, the very small comfort is, is that whatever it becomes, we will be able to adapt to it. Yes, yes. And yeah. and being producers and being smart individuals, I think our work ethic, we will adapt. The people who will not do well post COVID, because that's what we're gonna end up calling it post COVID. Right. Yeah. Is, PCV. Yeah, are the people who are not gonna morph to the change and they're gonna lock right. under when uh, I always did it this way. It's yep. like the same thing when when the big commercials left, you know. Yeah. New York. yeah. And and people weren't doing them, and no, the people who didn't change. morph, who yeah. didn't morph, and go, I'm embracing this moment, and so, you know, I'm not working with these guys more. I'm working with these people, and this is what I'm doing, and you know, I have to be the AD, I have to be the production supervisor, I have to be the producer. <laughs> I think I could be the PA too. Okay, I got that. Yeah, that know, would be art department. Come on, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I could be crafty. I, I've got some chips. We we got this. Those people. And I think, yeah. and Christian, you're that person. You know, I'm always Lawrence that person. Lawrence, too. Yeah. When Lawrence, yeah, exactly. I don't know you that well, so I'm not sure, but I'm assuming. And <laughs> we've morphed and yeah. and we adapted. And we will continue to morph and we'll continue to adapt. People who are going to say, oh, no. But those people are already, like, getting the real estate licenses six years ago. So yeah, they're yeah. out. <laughs> 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 I, I know exactly who they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. No, 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 no. Those people aren't listening to podcasts. They don't no, know who they not. are. They're exactly. Podcasts. I know, yeah. I, but I have to be honest. I think one of the hardest parts about this whole self quarantine and stay at home thing and stuff is that I miss my commute. I really, and I know that sounds funny. Oh, interesting. I really miss my commute because I used to take the ferry from the back of my building. And I'd take oh, it wow. down to, to Wall Street and then I'd walk across town to the Verizon right. building. And it's like a 45 minute thing. But I listen to the daily, the New York Times podcast yes. every day. <laughs> yeah. I haven't listened to it in weeks. I, yeah. I, what's that guy's name? Michael something, whatever. And it got that voice. And, yes. you know, <laughs> and I always found it. Sometimes I liked the story. Sometimes I didn't. But that was my thing. And I had this and I was on the water and I just loved it. And I, then I would walk and then I'd walk back to the ferry at the end of the day and I'd play solitaire and whatever. And there's no decompression. It's just like, oh, I'm standing up from the kitchen stool now and now I'm making dinner, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 so, exactly. Yeah, I'm and trying to find ways to stop the day, to stop the yeah. day. Make that transition out of it. So I do. I literally close it all up and I put it back. I have my camo bag over here and I, I call it the mobile office. I put everything away chargers, everything. Wow. And I wipe the counter down and I go, okay, now we're ready to go. Now you're done. Now That's a good ritual. Done. That is helpful. Right. We watch yeah, Wheel of Fortune. I, it hasn't been on lately and Jeopardy and we don't watch the news. I'm like, you know, we're all becoming really good at Jeopardy. And a little bit <laughs> <of it. laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, here, here in LA, obviously, you know, I've got my little privacy bubble, uh, my car, yes. you know. Hopefully not take too many phone calls on the commute if I'm going to an office in Santa Monica, but listen to podcasts mm-hmm. and just kind of focus your music, on whatever it is, or yeah. my music mm-hmm. and focus on what my day, what I need to accomplish in my day. What are the important things? And then, you know, 
losing that part of the ritual, it, it's a it's a shift. It's a big shift. Yeah. But uh, you know, we're adaptable, yeah. and you created you created your own new ritual, so that's yeah. great. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah. I'm I'm a creature of routine. Now, Emily, you mentioned a little bit ago about you know jobs canceling and everyone getting paid and whatnot. We'd like to talk a little bit more about that because that was the, a topic early on when we decided let's do a daily podcast about what's happening. Mm-hmm. And, and there were a lot of those kind of questions, especially for companies that maybe aren't AICP, where there aren't those guidelines of cancellation mm-hmm. requirements. How have you been handling that with your production partners? Well, I don't have to worry about that right now because what we're doing, uh, everybody was paid. We did the job. So I don't have to worry so that, about that, that one. Okay, that good. was the one thing. And then you you paid it, you made good. And, and that was, of course, yeah. you know, we're yeah. Verizon and it's a large corporation and yeah, you know, uh, there's no way, there's no way yeah. that I would let a PA not get their rate, uh, anything yeah. like that. That's just unacceptable to me. And if I heard that I would freak out going forward right now, you know, I've read a lot of this stuff. The AICP is putting out there, mm-hmm. about changing pay rate, you know, how a client pays them. You know, yes. where it was their guidelines are this, you know, Verizon has a different guideline. We don't adhere to uh, the A- AICP guidelines. We agree with them. We have our own guidelines. So mm. uh, which are a little bit more all encompassing and also geared more towards us. But the bottom line is, is that the minute you turn into that person or that company that doesn't pay somebody, you should just go disappear. It, it's just horrible. It's horrible. I mean, I think I think it's unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, our entire business is built upon confirmations and bookings. Yeah. If you tell somebody that they're booked, then they're you not use going the to B take word, other work. In. Exactly. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you've said, "Let me know if somebody else is trying to book you, and then I will book you." <laughs> so that just implies that you're paying them. <laughs> no, I think though I have a different point of view at this point. My my purview on things is a little bit different, but. Um, I think if you have a job that's like a month out and they cancel, right? no, you're doing something that week, you know, you're supposed to start that week and they cancel, they should make good or at least partially. Yeah. That's my, my gut. If you're on a television series and it goes into hiatus, they should cover you for at least two weeks. You know, yeah. they should pay you. Yeah. But I, if it's something pretty far away and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been bidding this or whatever, the, yeah. that company is not getting paid. Right. Well, yeah. even the, I, you know, even the IA says, you know, if you cancel at 2.30 the day before, right? I mean, there are some of those guidelines out yes, there, but it's exactly. more about right. the, you know, you've you've confirmed somebody, they've turned down work, you should pay them. Exactly. You should. And if you've, now if it's, it's right a situation where... The the advertiser says we're pulling the plug now because we we're within a month or two weeks or whatever it right. is. Yeah, and they pull the plug because they're like we're not doing this, and the production company doesn't get paid anything. Well, they shouldn't be beholden to the crew or the production staff because it is it's that triple down effect, you know. I what I get concerned about now, and I'm con- been having conversations, is the pay, like how fast you're supposed to pay people now. You know, the production company, because then they're responsible. Right. A lot of them float one job to the next job, right? Yes. Yeah. They'll start the job, and they haven't gotten the first fifty or something. Mm-hmm. It's okay; they can still cover the payroll because they have money in the the bank from yeah. their floating jobs. That's where I think it's going to get really tricky. That's the trickiness. In my, that's my point of view. And because especially if it's a company that you you consider a partner, if they've done a lot of your work, you can't, you gotta, you have to honor that relationship, you know, mm-hmm. and they have to honor your relationship. Mm-hmm. So you have to meet as a advertiser and a vendor, you have to meet in the middle. You always have to meet in the middle as a crew mm-hmm. person and a production company, you have to meet in the middle because what your, what your perception of something is, or this is the way it should be. And you should pay me now and blah, 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 because I'm screwed. You got to sometimes look at their side of you and say, hmm, yeah, I'm screwed too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have an accounting person. I have, you know, rent yeah. and I have to pay mm-hmm. for, you know, the licenses on these, you know, and my software and whatever it is, but at least there's some, you know, economic relief coming and, you know, yeah. that's hopefully going to help people. 
not going to solve their problems. It's not going to solve the problems, but hopefully it'll maybe we'll put a little band aid, a little band aid, a little band aid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So um, I know that you've told us how you are coping, and I'm I'm loving the way just put it away when you're done with it when it comes to work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, especially because anybody who is working, they're definitely working from home right now, unless they're an essential worker, right? Right. But what words of wisdom or any helpful advice that you might give somebody, a freelancer in this time right now of, you know, how to get through what we're doing right now? I think they have to find a routine. There has yeah. to be a routine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a big um, believer in schedules and routines. You you have a rule, right? And then you have to pivot. We always have to pivot, but you have a plan. You go, yeah. oh, and but I mean, it's it's as pathetic as saying, I know what we're eating for dinner tonight. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I have that plan. I get up, I go. And and I yeah. I remember when I was freelance and the work would be slow or something, I got up every day. I had a plan. And it could be, it could be a stupid plan. It'd be like, I'm taking a walk today, or I'm cleaning my <laughs> shoe closet, or whatever it is. But it's like you have to have a plan. You have to take the craziness out of the craziness by having a plan and creating your own new normal. Though I don't yeah. believe in normal. I hate that word because I don't think normal exists. But um, especially now, well, it's especially now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I just really feel like, you know, you get up, maybe you sleep a little, a little bit, but you don't stay in your PJs all day. Right. Or, right. Structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I put mascara on today. I was like, why am I doing that? And I did it yesterday too. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm like, I, you know, maybe I'm not doing the full face, but I'm putting a little concealer a little on and mascara, a little something. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get a chance to reapply prior to this, but you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I completely really agree important. with that. I think mm-hmm. routine yeah. and, and a schedule. And then, and then, then there's that moment where you're just like, I need to lie down on my couch and look at stupid TV and catch up on Shit's Creek and just laugh yes. for a while, <laughs> exactly. you know? Yeah. And that's fair. And that's totally fair. Totally yeah. Fair. The blessing with Chris and I doing this, this podcast daily was oh my God, I think awesome. immediately that structure that, you know, it took us a few days to get into the rhythm of it, but like getting up, I know I got to do this at this time. We got to record 915, blah, blah, blah. We have a guest. And that just really kind of helped structure my week and my day. And I think it was a blessing that uh, we're yeah. able to do this. So. Yeah. And now, and now I have to do my hair every day and change clothing every day. <laughs> and all that. I mean, it's, or, or else I the don't. the same sweatshirt on from yesterday. I know. <laughs> well, no, I, de- I definitely feel that if I, if I wasn't doing this, there would be, I mean, I wouldn't be doing it for myself. It's like, you know, the other thing is, it's making those masks that I saw on your Instagram feed. Ah, you, yeah. It's, it's using this time. Listen, I, I get a little annoyed when, when people are like, Oh my God, I've cleaned my closet. I've done this. <laughs> you know and what I'm I like, have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, I've done I've a lot thought today, about it. And I have, I thought about it and I want to be in that closet right now. Nope. And, and what I wouldn't do to be clearing out the basement, I would be doing anything, you know? And, but my life is not that life. And and then I'm blessed because I have this job and I love mm-hmm. my job. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, when I took this job two and a half, almost three years ago now, I, um, everyone kept saying to me, oh, do you like your job? I'm like, I love my job because I do. <laughs> I find I have a purpose there and I can help. And so I think that people are happiest when they have a purpose and they feel like mm-hmm. they're, their work, be it um, making masks, uh, doing a podcast, uh, you know, doing something, aid somebody, somebody's listening, you're involved, you're, you're a part of the human race. And I think that's important. And so my advice to people is seriously find that thing, like learn how to play the damn ukulele, whatever it is. (laughs) I'm going to put that on my list. (laughs) I have it on my list. We have a ukulele here. And so and I keep saying, (laughs) Oh my God, he's got one. It's out of tune, but yes. Yeah, so of course. <laughs> and um, so like my my grandmother used to sing, you know, play the ukulele. Her name was Lillian and with very body, body bad songs. And we were probably too might be hearing those sassy, <laughs> earthy songs as my father would say. And, but 
I'm like, I got to play the ukulele because that's a release. Every time I see somebody like plucking away on something or playing or singing, I'm like, I have to do it now. (laughs) But but then I have to answer an email or do a Zoom call or something. Right. (laughs) What's a nice fantasy? (laughs) Yeah. Emily, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for giving us your perspective from kind of the client side of things. What's happening? What do we do about it all? <laughs> you, you too, Lawrence. I enjoy this. Be safe. Be safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye. Oh, that was lovely. Wash your hands, mom. Ah, just Wash as she said. Hands. Okay. This is immediately what Emily said was that she didn't feel like that she was in the right frame of mind to do this. And by the time we were done with it, we're all laughing and having a good time. Laughing. And, and yeah, I know. I think uh, it's that old thing that, you know, I know you and I don't, we don't discuss war stories and we haven't said yeah. that quite as often as we did when this before CV. Right. But I also do think there's something very uh, powerful about speaking to other people who know what we do for a living and, you know, we can put ourselves in their situation and the advice that we get is so valuable. Yes, it is. I loved what she was talking about, you know, calling out freelancers, you know, when you get paid by project and you just land a big check and, you know, you (laughs) wouldn't like go out and buy for you. You want to buy a pair of boots. I buy, I don't know what I buy, but 183 pairs of shoes later, you know, we maybe need to check ourselves during this great pause. So learn not to be so immediate. <sighs> the great pause. Think about our future and plan a little bit more. Yes. Those are those are the, that uh, that call out kind of hit a hit a chord. Definitely. It did. It did. And I I can um, when I first started in the business uh, and I still to to a certain extent now um, used to think of things as in day rate chunks. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. So how much oh, yeah. is that pair of boots? I only have to work one day it's to get three them. day rates. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Depending on what level I was a PA to now. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Depending on where <laughs> what your day rate is. Exactly. Um, no, I would do that. Yeah. I only have to work that yeah. many days to afford that. And that's or this really many not... days for my rent. Yeah. yeah. And it's really not true. I mean, it's you really can not true. Think of it that way. But in the end, it's like. Or I've worked 10 days on this job. One of them's going to go towards these boots. And I have nine more days of rate to play with. No. So her pointing that out made me remember that. Yeah. Yeah. As much as we do think that there will always be a job next. You never know. Just never know. So we should be prepared. Yes. And we can be scared, but don't panic. (laughs) That's what she said. That's another good one. We're allowed to be scared. (laughs) I just picture Sophia, her daughter. (laughs) <laughs> Being like, okay, <laughs> okay, mom, I won't panic. Okay, mom. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I will call it out again and um, putting it away. So it when away. you're done with work, just putting it away. So whatever, you know, if you happen to be working out there, what your projects are, because we're all working from home. If you are working, it's like, how do you define the hours that you're awake? Yeah. And those hours should be well defined into what your work is versus ending up, you know, working from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. because your computer's open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That's it all makes healthy. sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great well, interview. Thank you. That was a great interview mm-hmm. and uh, made me remember to tune my ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> Um, I cannot Chris, believe she said it and you pulled it out. That was fantastic. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to be, I was in, uh, I play ukulele a lot and I was in a, a ukulele orchestra here in Silver Lake called the Ukulele Orchestra of the Western Hemisphere. And I have ah, been, I've been, yeah, what? yeah, we were 20, 20 members strong, up. 20 <laughs> members strong, 20 ukuleles playing together in sweet, sweet harmony. Um, I got too busy. I haven't been able to be involved in that group much anymore. <laughs> but Christian, they just put out a UGC, what? U- user generated content video of them playing each individually from home, all married together, playing one song. Holy shit. Um, yeah. And they just put it out yesterday. I'm not in the group anymore, but I still love them all. Uh, so I want to include that song at the at, after we wrap it up here. I think that you should. And I also think that we should have a link on our, you know, resources page that says fun stuff. OK. 
Let's do that. Just a little subject. So um, the fun stuff that we happen to mention during the show, because um, we are at heart both fun people. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we could put a wouldn't, couple of links in there for you guys of some fun yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know it today. <laughs> I know. Well, I feel um, I actually, I feel better after talking to Emily, Good. just like I yeah, felt better I yesterday and I felt better the day before. The stories yeah. are really helping me. Well, that's it for today, right? I think that's it. All right, everybody, stay safe, stay connected, stay active, and please stay home. And if you do happen to leave the house, wear a mask. That's our new guidelines, everyone. Um, That will protect other people from your germs. Don't forget to wash your hands. And for the love of God, stop touching your face. (laughs) (laughs) And be sure to send us your voice recordings or your emails to producershappyhour at gmail.com. Christian, how do people get a hold of you directly? SisterChristianProduces.com and Lawrence, how tell the people how many ways they can get a hold of you. So many ways, <laughs> depending on what you want out of me. Now, uh, LawrenceTLewis.com. You can see all my producing work. VoiceOfLawrence.com for voiceover. Um, and that's it. All right. Um, I miss you already. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.